I'm OptiGPU and today we're going to somehow install this RTX 5060 into an Optiplex 5040 small form factor. I originally tried to install this card into a 7010, but the 24 pin connector is just ever so slightly in the way. As we zoom in on the graphics card here, it's not fully seated. This is a 5040 right here. It has plenty of room. There's really nothing. Um, nothing in the way. It can go all the way over to this locking mechanism for the hard drive carriage. So I redid everything with the 5040 and got it all done thanks to the Hyangen triple monitor extender. I was able to pick up a new GPU on eBay while buying a new power supply on Amazon and doing my research all on full screen windows and all at the same time. Then when I was done, I was able to easily fit both the monitors and my laptop into the laptop section of my backpack and head out wherever I needed to go. You might see a 7010 in the background when I'm unboxing the GPU, but I'm okay with that. Let's get right into it. This is an 8 gigabyte, 128 bit GDDR7 card. It has a core clock of 2512 megahertz. It has several DisplayPort connections and one HDMI connection, 3840 CUDA cores, 145 watt TDP and PCI Express 5.0. Of course, we're not going to be utilizing that because, you know, old Optiplex. In the box, we have our graphics card itself. And wouldn't you know it, they put a full height bracket on a low profile card. It's a brand new card, so it's sealed with special gigabyte tape. In my one year hiatus from making videos, I decided to get a regular knife. Now I don't have to use a giant butcher knife to open these things anymore. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, cool. Just wow, open so cool. That's what's up. Right, now that we have it open, first things first, there's a low profile bracket in the box. So let's get these swapped out. All right, there we go. Got the full height bracket off. If you're wondering how I did that, you just need a J1 Phillips head screwdriver to remove these four screws. To get the panel off of your Optiplex 5040, slide this lever toward the middle and then pull straight back. This 5040 doesn't currently have a GPU in it. If yours does, you'll have to remove that first by flipping this out of the way and pulling over on the release lever while lifting up. Taking a look at the PCIe situation, our better PCIe slot is closer to the power supply. So normally we would have to use a single width card and something that this power supply can handle. Uh, what we're going to do is replace the power supply with one that's thinner and has more power so that we can fit a dual width GPU into this better slot. The RTX 5060 is not only a dual slot GPU, but it also requires extra power. So that's why we're going with the Apivia 500 watt ITX power supply. It's a modular power supply, but it fits just fine in an Optiplex, just with a little bit of weirdness with regard to plugging in power and I'll show you what that looks like here in a bit. In order to remove the old hard drive, you must first unplug it from everything. Unfortunately, the places in which it's plugged in are underneath the hard drive caddy and underneath this largely unnecessary giant plastic shroud. So first, we're going to remove the plastic shroud by pulling out with our thumbs on these pieces right here, lifting it straight up, and we can remove this four pin connector. You need really slender fingers for this. All right, four pin connector is removed and we're going to work it back underneath the hard drive caddy and across. In order to remove this hard drive caddy, you unlock it by flipping the switch this way and then you remove the entire face of the computer. With these newer Optiplexes, they're a little bit harder to get in and out of compared to the older ones. So you have to remove the face. You've got these 
three clips right here. And then the hard drive caddy swings up and out and takes the CD-ROM drive with it. I'm going to unplug it. You don't actually have to unplug it uh, to get to this. I'm just being extra thorough. We're going to work these cables out here, and that's it. Now we should be able to remove this old power supply by removing the screws on the front and sliding it back and up. Just have three screws right here. Now with the screws removed, right back here, there is a lever that you push down on in order to slide the power supply back and bring it up and out. Now the old power supply is out, it's time to slide in the new power supply. I would advise plugging this in first because you have to push it in with a lot of force and then threading the cord through here. The reason I would suggest that is when you're pressing with a lot of force, plug this in and your power supply is in here, you could risk damaging some internal components on the computer. We don't want that. This power supply actually slots in kind of nice right between here and another tab on the back and that holds it in place really well. I would say as long as you don't roll your PC down a hill or try to use it while riding on horseback, this is going to stay in place, being held in place by the cover on top and these tabs. We now have plenty of room to plug in our 5060 and we've got room to connect external power as well. In order for the GPU to fit, we just need to make two quick case modifications. We need to swing this out of the way, push that out of the way, uh, and using a pair of pliers or something that can cut through this metal, we need to remove this. I know we just put this low profile bracket on, but we're gonna take it right back off because as you can see right here, I would have to make a lot more cuts on the case in order for this to fit. And I don't wanna do that. So I can just take the bracket off and we're still going to have access to this HDMI port and two display ports. All right, now that we have that bracket off, our GPU should fit right in here. It goes right underneath, right underneath that, and then we plug it directly down. It's going to be held in place by the PCIe slot. So again, if we're not playing games while riding on horseback, we're not you know, tossing the PC back and forth to our friend, I know for me, it's usually just sitting on my desk um, so this GPU and this power supply shouldn't be going anywhere. So here's what our GPU ports look like. As I was saying, we still have access to two display port and one HDMI port. Lucky for us, there was only one port that's being blocked right here and we're not going to need it. Now we just need to get all the cables connected. For this particular PC, we're going to need a 24 pin to eight pin adapter because this is eight pin power, not 24. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can easily get your hands on one of these for cheap. When plugging your cables in, I recommend tilting the power supply up like this so as to not damage your GPU while getting these plugged in. Or you can just plug in the GPU after the fact but I figure it's going to be easier for cable management when I already know what space I have. The 
It's too bad the location of the 4-pin and 8-pin weren't reversed because I've got a lot of extra cable length here and if it was any shorter I wouldn't have enough length right here. But hey, it works. We're going to tuck all these cords away right over here trying to stay out of the way of this fan and then we'll get all of the components back in place. Now that we've got everything tucked out of the way, we're going to put the hard drive caddy and CD-ROM back into place and lock it and put the face back on our OptiPlex. There we go. I'm going to leave this big plastic shield or sh shroud. <laughs> I'm going to leave this big plastic shroud out of it because I don't want to uh, put too much stress and strain on this cable right here. And I don't really think this is entirely necessary. So now we're going to get the panel back on our Optiplex and fire it up and see how it performs. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing turns on, if it blows up or nothing happens. Okay, quick note, um, make sure you actually plug in the external power to your graphics card. Um, yeah, I promise I've done this before. Okay, second moment of truth, but this time the GPU has power. Hooray, it's working. Looks like it hasn't recognized my new GPU yet, so I'm going to go install it manually. We have our graphics card recognized now, so it's time to go into 3D Mark and run some tests. On TimeSpy, we got a score of 8,422, a graphics score of 12,370, and a CPU score of 2,999. Obviously, the CPU is a bottleneck, so I'd like to max out the CPU in this thing and do another video later on, or maybe work with a 10th gen Optiplex and see how it does. In Night Raid, we got a 22,585, a graphics score of 55,649, and a CPU score of 5,172. In Fire Strike, we got a 16,234, a graphics score of 34,894, physics score of 6,215, and a combined score of 6,262. 